What's going on beautiful people? In this video, I'm gonna walk you through two methods that you can adopt to connect your Google Sheets with Elementor Forms. The first method I'm gonna show you is gonna be using a snippet of code. We're not coding anything ourselves, but we are gonna use a snippet of code to activate the ability to have a webhook using Google Sheets. And the second method is not gonna use any type of code at all. We're gonna use a no code solution called Make. It's an alternative to Zapier that I prefer to use. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Okay, so we have here a dummy page for our one page website builder called Limey. If you haven't checked this one out, go ahead and check it out. Here is the form we're going to use. I have here an incognito page. That way we can just refresh here quickly and utilize it after we make some updates. And this is the person that created the snippet that we're going to use from GitHub. This person is called Roz. You can go ahead and check Roz out if you'd like. Roz Ohad, I don't know this person, but they did a great job with creating a bunch of different scripts. And one of them is this one that we're going to use. So let's go ahead and click on raw to grab this snippet of code. Hit Command A or Control A, then Command C or Control C. That way you're highlighting the text and then copying it. And let's go back here and go to your Google Sheet page and click on extensions, apt script, remove the code that's in there already and hit command V to paste or control V to paste on Windows. Let's go ahead and give this a name. We'll call it Elementor form webhook. And you do wanna make sure that you do two steps here. The first one is to do a new deployment. Now this won't work just yet. Click on web app, Elementor webhook, Make sure to click here so that this is available to anyone because you're gonna want this publicly available. So hit deploy. It's gonna deploy the project. The next thing we're gonna to have to do is just run the script once. It's gonna require us to provide permissions to the account that's running behind here, the email account. So I'm gonna authorize access and hit allow. And we're gonna do this once more in a second. So we'll click here run just to make sure that everything is complete. And if you do wanna see your deployments, you can click on manage deployments. And this is the URL that we're going to throw information at. That's essentially the webhook. Don't copy this one from the library. You wanna make sure to copy this one. So I'm gonna copy the web app URL and go to Elementor. Here's our dummy page. Make sure to click on the pencil next to the form. That way we have all the options next to the form. And under actions after submit, Right now, what we have selected is the email. We don't wanna send an email anymore. We can if we'd like, but in this case, we're gonna select webhook. That's gonna give us this option right here. So notice when I don't have that selected, I don't have the webhook options. So when I do select webhook, that defines to the form that every time this form is submitted, it's gonna go through this action, which is the webhook and whatever is defined in here. So under this webhook URL, let's go ahead and paste the URL that we copied again from here, from the deployment, and I'm gonna hit update and go to my incognito mode and hit refresh. So if all goes well here, I should be able to provide my information in the form and have this appear in Google Sheets. Hit send. It's gonna take it a sec. Again, it's calling that webhook. Submission was sent successfully. Let's go back to our Elementor page. You're gonna notice that now there is a tab right in the bottom left here, and there it is. This is the information I just submitted. So this unlocks to us a ton of different possibilities that we can utilize using Google Sheets. You can add extensions to Google Sheets, you can do a bunch of different stuff right here within Google Sheets without having to use any other third party. So that sums up the first method of how you can ping a webhook from your Elementor form. What I'm going to do is to link in the description below to a quota page. The bottom line of what this comes out to be is up to 50 sets of data can be thrown at this webhook on any given day and Google won't charge you anything. So the big limitation behind going this route is that for one, you're using code and if you don't know what you're doing and you do wanna customize some things, it could get pretty tricky. And the second thing is that you're tied down to the limitations and capabilities of Google Sheets. Now Google Sheets is pretty advanced, but say you want to get creative with it, you're going to need to start installing different scripts or maybe some extensions, whether it's a Google extension or a Chrome extension that works with Google Sheets. And it's not always going to be crystal clear to you how to go at this approach because you're going to need to get pretty creative with how you're going about it. And that leads me to the next approach, which I think is a lot easier to work with because you don't have to touch code at all and you never have to leave 
remove the tool that you're working with from start to finish, meaning from the webhook receiving the data all the way to calling Google Sheets, sending off a Slack channel, sending an email and so forth. I'm a big fan of Make. I find that their modular concept is a lot more flexible and easier to work with once you get the hang of it. It does take a sec to understand how everything works, especially if you're coming from Zapier, that's a little easier to understand right off the bat. Now, I like Make so much that I ended up reaching out to them because I wanted to become an affiliate and felt like I've been recommending their tool so much that it made sense to see if I can somehow get a kickback in return for it. So if you do wanna support the channel, I'll drop the link in the description below. And another thing that you're gonna get by helping support the channel is up to 10,000 operations for free from Make. Now, you don't have to upgrade to the Pro account. It is a freemium concept, so you can start to use their service for free. And whenever you do feel like you wanna upgrade, you can. And again, the link in the description below is going to provide to you the ability to get up to 10,000 operations for free on your first month if you do see the need to go into that level of scale. So let's go back to my computer and take a look at how we can use Make. So here I am in my Make account. I'm gonna click on Create New Scenario. Let's rename this scenario so it's easier to find later. Elementor Forms and click on the plus sign, search for webhook, click on webhook, and then you want custom webhook. Click on add. We can call this Elementor webhook. You can name it really whatever you want. Click on save. And now we have that same concept, the URL that we need to throw the data at. So I'm gonna hit copy click OK and let's make sure to hit save here and then hit run once. So this webhook is now running and waiting to receive information. I'm gonna go back to Elementor. We can actually close this out. All we need is the Google Sheet and close the snippet of code out. Let's go back to our form and let's just change the URL here to be the URL that we just got from Make. Hit update. And you're gonna see that now it's gonna be a little different because when the webhook receives the information, nothing is gonna show up here. We still need to do that part. So just to test this out, I'm gonna refresh the page here and say my name and then email. This is a test with make and hit send. And hopefully that fires off and there it is. So now make is showing us that data has been received and there it is right there, all the information that I need. The second step is to start manipulating this data. So we can hit that plus sign again, just to show you the possibilities, you can really type into here anything that you can dream up and manipulate the data, send it to different directions, do whatever you want with it. To be consistent, we're just gonna do Google Sheets and let's add a row with the information that we got. For me, by default, it selected my Google account. If this is the first time you're using Make, you'll have to click on Add Account and then authorize that account. That way, Make has access to your Google account. So we're not gonna touch anything here. Select by path, keep it on my drive, and we're gonna click here to choose the Google Sheet that we want. What I'm going to search for is the Elementor Google Sheet. Whatever you named yours, go ahead and type that in. So that way, it'll sync with our Google Sheet, and now it'll ask us for the sheet name. In this case, I'm gonna copy this over here just to show you that here we can start to get more creative where with the script it was automatically throwing it here and in order to start manipulating and changing things we would have to actually mess with the code where over here we can define everything to whatever tab whatever information we want how we want it to appear without touching code at all and that's the beauty of this and we can keep going with the scenario as well so i'm going to select the sheet name sheet one so if i do a drop down here sheet one Table contain headers. In this case, I just created those headers. So yes, so it'll skip the first row. And now it's providing to me the input fields that it sees from those headers. So under your email, what we wanna do is do email under your name, your name, form name, select form name and message, let's do message. Form ID, if this is necessary, you can go ahead and inject that as well. And you can carry on and on and provide more details if you'd like. That's all we need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK, and let's save our scenario and hit Run once again. Once we're done, we can just, in fact, we can just do this right now. We can just leave it on, that way we don't have to click Run once every time. Depending on what you're working on, if you turn something on too early, you might start to receive data or something's off before it's really ready and you don't wanna do that yet. But because it's a demo, we can go ahead and do that. I'm in my incognito now. I'm gonna provide information again here. This is a test with Make and Google Sheets. So let's see that this is getting sent. Your submission was successful and let's see if this ran. 
So here I am in sheet one, and it looks like the information is in here. So here's the test that we just did. So this is where the modularity concept of make becomes super powerful. I can go ahead and hit plus here and just add maybe Slack and say that every time a form is submitted, I want to create a message and blast it off into different channels. I can even add here more conditional logic. That way it only continues this route if certain things happen and I can define different routes if other things happen. So make really allows you to get creative here. And again, the, the modularity concept is what I really became a fan of, which becomes a lot easier to work with once you get the hang of it. So that's really all you need to do. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this module. I do wanna show you one concept of the conditional logic. So let's just say that if the emails that are coming in, say we're looking for business accounts and somebody comes in and says that they are a Gmail account we can go ahead and eliminate that condition from coming in and then even send an email to the user saying, we're sorry, but you don't meet the criteria for us to work with you. So we can go ahead and add Gmail and say, send email. And I'm gonna just attach this over here and it's gonna add a router automatically. I'm gonna hit auto align that way it's just a little easier for us to see, zoom out a little bit. And now what's happening is a webhook receives data and then it enters a router. What this means is it's gonna fire into two different directions simultaneously. So let's go ahead and add a condition. Let's call this condition if business account exists. And what we're going to do is say that our condition is that the email cannot contain Gmail and we're gonna hit okay. And we'll do the same thing here, but say if Gmail, then define our condition, which is that the email contains in this case, Gmail, and we're gonna hit okay. So if business account, pretty much if there is no Gmail within the email, it'll continue to the Google Sheet. Otherwise, it'll continue to Gmail and we can modify the email that comes in and we're gonna send the email to the person that submitted the information saying, sorry, it looks like you don't meet the criteria for us to work together. Please try again later. And once we hit okay, what this is again gonna do is, the person that submitted this information is gonna receive an email saying, sorry, it looks like you don't meet the criteria for us to work together and hit okay. And if it's not a Gmail account, it'll get added to the Google Sheet. And then again, we can add a notification saying, send an email. And in this case, we'll email this person saying, we received your information and we'll be in touch soon. And this is exactly why I like to work with Make. Just look at everything we were able to achieve within a minute without having to touch any code. And so now, again, this is already updated and running automatically. So if I go back just to test this out into incognito mode, refresh the page so that we have the latest updates and just add some information. In this case, let's go first with a business account. This is a business account, oops, account test and hit send. And now technically what should happen is it should go this direction and I should get an email saying we received information and we'll be in touch soon. So let's go to Google Sheets. It looks like that second line was added. In my inbox, you can see here that the email just came through. I'm gonna do the same thing, but in this time, we're gonna use a Gmail account. So I'm gonna provide the information accordingly. This is a test with Gmail and hit send. And this time, if I go back, it looks like Google Sheets did not get updated at all. And if we go to my inbox, you can see here that I got a bounce back right away saying that this account does not exist, but you can see here what the content of the message was. It looks like you don't need the criteria for us to work together. Please try again, which is what we defined here. So you can see here a Gmail account was detected in the conditional logic and this email was fired off and Google Sheets was not updated. So that's all.
I hope you enjoyed this video and if you'd like to support the channel, the best way to do so is to slam on that thumbs up button down below and hit the subscribe button that way next time I publish another video, you will be notified. I'm going to link to two more videos that you can watch. The first one is going to be proven strategies of how to land more clients for your business. It can really be whatever business you're working on. It does not have to be a web agency at all. And the second video is going to be how to migrate your WordPress installation using a plugin called All-in-One Migration. Thank you all for watching. Subscribe, like, comment below. See y'all next time.